I'm going to talk to you a bit today about security. Uh, you will probably all know about security on your network at work. Your IT folks take care of that. There are firewalls and routers and all kinds of stuff to make sure that you're safe when you're on the network at work. Now, the one thing that you are not safe on is your network at home. Unless you're like me and you have taken some measures to do so. So today's video is going to be about the Firewalla and I'm going to show you the interface for the Firewalla on my phone. Now, as we were, I was discussing, uh, the Firewalla has a considerable amount of information uh, that is available in your phone. And again, this is our, this is the phone. And I wanna show you, you notice that we get the internet uh, connection speed, which allows you to test your internet speed from your, uh, from your network provider. We can go into flows, into top blocked flows, and we can see uh, those, uh, those blocked flows. And so let's look at an outbound flow. And I wanna look at this because uh, there's, I, I mentioned about the Fire AI in this domain. So this outbound flow, if I ask it about mparticle.com, you'll see it's gonna tell me what this uh, domain is about. And it's associated with advertising technology. And it's being called by a lot of different devices, whether it's my phone or it's my, uh, my PC. And it has, uh, it, it's fine in that it is advertising technology, but maybe I only want it when I want it, right? So if I say, well, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna have this, uh, this domain is okay on my, streaming devices like my Amazon Fire or my Google Chromecast or my Roku um, because I want them to be able to, to not, I don't want my videos to roll because it's trying to get to an ad domain that it can't get to. And sometimes that's what happens on your videos. And I'm going to show you a picture on the left here about my Firewalla and what it looks like. I'm gonna show you the size of it. Uh, you'll see that it's a very small device, but it's really powerful. And I want you to know about this. I've, I've used this for about two years now. And normally I would be doing an unboxing of this firewall. But I've done a lot of different firewalls over my life in IT. I had a Fortinet uh, and I had a Zixel and I had a Cisco, and in all of those different firewalls, it doesn't matter, Sonic Wall, I've had a Sonic Wall as well. All of these different consoles, these different firewalls, you have to pay additional for client software, for the licenses to run these firewalls. And that is not as user-friendly for home network. Nobody wants to spend a lot of money ongoing every year to maintain your firewall at home. I've been looking for, and I looked for many years for a, a firewall that would do what I wanted it to do while maintaining this idea of let's keep the price on a regular basis down or non-existent. Now the Zixel was as close as I came with that to having a firewall that did not have client software or client licenses that I had to pay for. However, it wasn't the best of firewalls. And I used that for quite a long time. I used the Fortinet because it was a better and faster firewall, but it required licenses. You had to buy licenses and renew them every year. And so I really wanted to find an another firewall to use. And the Firewalla is that firewall. So as I uh, alluded to and, and I had shown you some screenshots of, you can have the Firewalla interface on your phone. I am showing you at this point, I am showing you the Firewalla web interface because it's easier for me to capture rather than being on my phone. So we're going to look at this all of the same 
interface pieces for this firewalla are in the web interface just as you would be in the phone interface. So there's uh, a lot of things that you can look at here from this perspective, right? So if the first thing we want to look at <clears throat> is going to be the devices, we're going to look at devices and you can see that I have a number of different devices here and you'll see that I'm blanking out the IP address for them because I really don't want you to see that but it gives you a lot of information on any one particular one. So I can go in and I can look at the connectivity on this particular family soundbar and see it when it was connecting, what it was downloading. And then I get to see what the destination for it is as well as what it is blocked, the rules that are blocking. So you can see we have a porn block on this one. And generally, I have that on all of my devices. So that is how you can look at these various pieces. And we can look at this connectivity check, and it's outbound. And I can block this connection if I care to do so. So it really gives you a granular ability to go in and see what your devices are doing and determine what rules will apply to each device. It is the firewall that I would recommend for you. After using it for two years, I can tell you that it has only gotten better and they don't charge you extra. They don't charge you for additional licenses. They don't charge you for anything other than what you get and you get a lot. So I wanna to talk to you a little about why locking down your home, why your modem's firewall is not enough, right? So I know you, like me, have probably got a dozen devices in your homes, uh, laptops, smartphones, ring cameras, smart speakers, gaming consoles, even voice-enabled devices like light bulbs and so forth. So each one lives in your home network and each one is a potential point for hackers and malware or snoops trying to pry into your family's life. And when you look at the threat landscape of your home, you'll see that there are smart TVs and cameras, which often run outdated software. If you're not updating your firmware, you should be, and they are ripe for hijacking. You have gaming consoles that can be fished with malicious game mods or spoof chat links, and your children don't know any better. You may not know any better. Then you have smart speakers and thermostats, and they have usage patterns in there, and so that can give hackers some information, and that's not something that you wanna do. And then work from home PCs, right? So when you work from home, you have this ability to work from home, but it also provides a, a ripe area to hack into based on whether or not they can get to your corporate credentials. So every connected gadget in your home expands the battlefield, expands the ability to get hacked. And so if you think about what your modem firewall what it does and what it does not do. So if you're like me, you have a modem and that modem has a router in it. And the router uses a, a NAT, which is a network address translation firewall. And it's a very basic firewall. And it blocks people coming in, hackers attempting to get into your network. And while it blocks most of it, it's not foolproof. And so if someone tries to come into your network, it's going to block that for the most part, unless they know how to get around, how to spoof the NAT tra translation. But it blocks most of it. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't scan your outbound traffic. And that's what Firewalla does. And that's why I would recommend it. Now, you might be saying, well, Dean, I could buy expensive firewalls and believe me i have you might say i can buy these expensive firewalls but i don't want to spend that much money well 
Firewalla is a one-time price. What I've got is a Firewalla Purple, which runs about $300. And you don't pay for additional licensing every year. That's where they get you, right? I bought a Fortinet for $150 and then had to pay over $100 a year for additional licensing. So that adds up very quickly. Now this firewall, I'm gonna show you what we have in the phone and how that will help you to be protective and proactive. We go back to this, uh, to this block activity that you saw in the web interface, which allows us to see that there was a blocked um, malicious site uh, that was trying to be accessed. So if we look uh, here, we can see that we have a number of different things that the firewall will do. Now, a lot of this, when you look at this, a lot of this is out of the box, already configured to protect you. So plugging it into your router and then plugging it into, <clears throat> and then you know using it with your wireless is pretty much a no-brainer. You can plug it into your router and then uh, and then use it in that way, right? So maybe plug it between the modem and the router, and if you have an all-in-one modem, uh, you may have to do some some of that. Um, but for people who want to, to have something that just works, this is great. So one of the things that FireWallet will do is it will scan the outbound traffic. It will block outbound traffic. And one of the things that I had to really address was the ability to have my TVs work seamlessly through this because if you're thinking about it and you're watching TV, uh, especially if, if you're doing TVs, that, if you're streaming a lot, right? That streaming calls out to different places for ads and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of inbound but outbound traffic that the TVs do with that you say your Roku or your Amazon Fire or your Google Chromecast. Right. All of these have outbound calls. And if you don't allow those outbound calls from those devices, they will look like they're buffering and have other, other issues. But what you don't want to do is you want to be very specific about what you're allowing to go outbound. You want to make sure that what you're allowing to go outbound is only from those devices and not from your PCs or not from your phones. Because you, if, if for some reason you were to accidentally click on a link, you don't want that link to go to a, a fraudulent domain or something that is a threat. And that's what Firewall will help to avoid. Now, the one thing that you don't really have is an app or user level control where you can just block your teenager's phone from uploading TikTok videos at night or quarantining a misbehaving internet device like a, a camera. So you want to make sure that you can block different devices and, and different apps and Firewall, again, helps you to, to deal with that. And you can't really, the NAT firewall that's in your router, it can't really decrypt and inspect HTTPS, and Firewall can. And there's no threat intelligence to it. It's a very dumb firewall, the NAT firewall. It really does not offer threat intelligence, whereas Firewall does. In fact, Firewall has offered some really good and very positive updates to its firewall that I will show you that you will really enjoy. I, I mentioned about the Fire AI in this domain. So this outbound flow, if I ask it about mparticle.com, you'll see it's going to tell me what this uh, domain is about, and it's associated with advertising technology. And it's being called by a lot of different devices, whether it's my phone or it's my, uh, my PC. And it has, 
it, it's fine in that it is advertising technology. So NAT doesn't really do the trick, right? So if you want to get a defense in depth in your home, then you want to upgrade to a firewalla. And you may even want to look at, they now have a zero trust network that you can build with the firewalla. This is um, one of the things that I was talking about uh, at the first of the video about how you can then buy new access points to attach to the firewalla, specifically by firewalla, which makes your network then a zero trust network, a true zero trust network. And what that means to you is that everything that joins your network is not a trusted node. Um, you're not gonna, there, it's not gonna be allowed to get to other parts of the network. It's not gonna be allowed uh, in, to do anything that you don't allow it to do. And so that's a really important point. Uh, and I have, not, I have not purchased these yet, but that's coming by adding Wi-Fi routers to the firewall that are specifically built to work with the firewall. So I think you'll be very happy with it. So we're gonna look at the interface. I've talked a little bit about why cybersecurity is so important. Hey, this is Dean Morgan from Morgansoft, and I just wanted to finish up the video, and hopefully you've enjoyed this video on the firewall. I would always recommend that the firewall is something that you would certainly consider as your next firewall. And I'm gonna add a link at the bottom for the purple and for the gold. And if you like this video, please share and subscribe because it's really important for us to grow the channel and keep giving you good videos like this. I'm gonna try and do more personal videos rather than generic AI videos uh, for this channel. So hopefully you will come back and enjoy more videos by me. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.